Okay, the skill I'm going to demonstrate now is insertion of the NG tube. Um, we need quite a bit of equipment before we get started. We're going to need a towel, um, which we'll place over the patient. I've done all my DeWipes and explained everything to the patient. My bed's up, so I've got all my supplies with me, but basically we need a towel, our stethoscope, of course our gloves, um, a flashlight, uh, and our NG tube, and then this one I'm using a number 14 Salem sump. We'll need a glass um, so that they'll be able to drink um, and with a straw, um, normal saline. We'll need some lubricant, some tape, um, pH um, if, they, if they use that at, at your um, hospital, something to tape the, cap, the tube with, a rubber band, safety pin, syringe. I think that's everything. Um, so we're in the patient's room. First, of course, we would want to do an abdominal assessment. You know, it depends on why we're putting this tube in. Um, so we would have listened to their bowel sounds, checked for distension, and all of that first. We've told the patient what we're going to do. Um, we would want to ask them if they've had any um, problems with either one of their nares. Do they have a deviated septum? Is it easier for them to breathe in one side or the other? Uh, you could use a flashlight and kind of just do a little inspection and uh, see which, which side would be better to put the tube in. Uh, it won't actually go down on our mannequin, so we're going to use our, our head model here <clears throat> for the insertion, but we would have that towel around them and everything. Okay, so we want to have our water ready. Uh, you would want to know, of course, ahead of time, are we putting this to suction or are we just going to uh, clamp it? Okay, so we've got our tube ready. Again, we've told the patient everything that we're going to do. Um, first of all, we want to kind of, um, you can wrap this around your hand a little bit to kind of help that go in a little bit better. This is not a sterile procedure, so you don't have to be, you know, careful about keeping this sterile. We want to measure from the nose to the ear, and then we're going to go down to the xiphoid process. And once you get that measurement, then you want to use a little piece of tape and mark that on your tube so you'll know uh, how far you're going to go in. Okay, we'll need lots of lubricant, got our water uh, handy, and I would have another person with me, much easier to do this with you when you have another set of hands. Um, so we're going to lube this up about four inches. What you also can do, um, if, if this is a patient that does have a, a distended abdomen and um, that's the reason you're putting this in and you're putting it up to suction, you can go ahead and uh, put your syringe on the end of your tube. We're going to be um, checking this eventually um, with 20 of air. You can drop your 20 of air in your syringe and hook it up to the bottom, to the end of your tube while you're getting ready to put it in. Okay, so hand signal for the patient also is important. Um, you know, to establish that ahead of time. If they want you to stop, they can raise their hand or whatever it might be that they need you to stop. But usually you can tell that as you're, as you're doing this. When we first start, what we're going to have the patient do, we're going to have their head of the bed up. Probably be a good idea to take the pillow out from under their head. Their head's going to be extended backward, okay? So you're going to have the patient's head back, and you're going to have this all lubricated up. And so we insert the tube, and you'll come like to a dead end. And once you get to that spot at the back of the oral pharynx, then you're going to have the patient bend their head forward, and you're going to have your helper have your, your water right there, and they're going to start drinking water, and you're going to tell the patient to start drinking. So now their head has come forward, and they're going to be drinking. As they drink and swallow, you're pushing that tube down as, you, as they swallow. It will go in much, much easier. So my tube is in where it should be. I can just temporarily um, tape that on the patient's nose. If I went ahead and um, had my syringe already hooked up, I can go ahead and aspirate my stomach contents, and you'll get that really quickly. If I needed to check my pH, I would do that now. Check my pH. Okay, and then I'm going to do my other check, and that's I'm going to listen. 
and you should hear a, a nice big swoosh sound. Okay, so I have my two checks. I aspirated and then I also instilled my air. Okay, and then um, what you would want to do is um, flush this tube if you're going to just clamp it and not hook it up to, to a um, suction. You would flush it with um, probably about 30 of your saline and then clamp it. Otherwise, you're going to hook it up to suction. I would also then, of course, tape this better to the patient's nose. And also, you're going to tape it and use a um, safety pin and a rubber band and, and hook this part of the tubing to their gown so that it's not pulling on anything. You don't want any tension on the tubing. Um, if this was to suction, I would then um, be watching as to how much output they're having. They could have, you know, it could be a small amount or it could be 600 milliliters. You just don't know. You would want to stay and watch how much that initial um, output was from the NG tube. Um, you would be sure and document all of that. You're going to assess the patient's abdomen again. You know, if they were distended to start with, are they less distended now? Do they have bowel sounds? All of that. You're going to check that again. Um, of course, put the patient's bed down, keep them safe, make sure they're comfortable. Um, and then I'm going to document all this, what size tube I put in, um, what kind of contents I got back, what color was it, what consistency, and then if I did uh, hook it up to a section or if I just clamped it.